Welcome back to PSS everyone. Today I'm here once again to drop some more pedal knowledge on you. Now I know I've been making a lot of uh, guitar pedal videos here recently, but a lot of them have actually been leading up to this exact video. Um, so if you want to get caught up, now would be a good time. So what we're doing today is a bit of a challenge, a bit of a comparison to see just how good of a job I can do. But uh, I'm going to try and see the results of putting together a small but effective guitar rig uh, entirely out of pedals for in the neighborhood of $250, basically this, this stuff I have lying around, and um, see how it sounds. So um, there's a million reasons why you might want to do this, and I don't have nearly enough time to go into every scenario, but um, a couple of pertinent ones that I can think of. Number one, for 250 bucks, it's not that much, right? I mean... I'd imagine most players are going to spend in the neighborhood of $300 um, for a decently priced instrument. Not to say that you, know, you might have something in the 200 to 250 buck range if you're you know starting out, but um, you know for anywhere from about two thirds to half the price of your instrument, you can actually put together a really decent pedal rig um, for a million you know combinations of use cases. So. Um, one of these use cases is, of course, recording. Um, of course, that assumes that you'd have a computer and the software and the hardware, like the audio interface that you would need to hook, up, hook all this stuff up to, which if you're on a budget of 250 bucks for your pedals may not be the case, but um, you can also use it for jamming with friends as long as you have a, a loudspeaker, or let's say you just need a practice rig and you don't want to blow, you know, 300 to 400 dollars on a decent amp because all the little practice amps that cost you know below that are generally not great for their built-in features you're going to have to add a lot of other stuff on top of them which becomes you know a lot of bulk and unnecessary stuff for just a practice rig um, and a lot of that you can achieve a lot better with pedals in my opinion anyway so what are we trying to replicate um, in this video primarily metal guitar rhythm tones and lead tones and for that you need a few things in your signal chain now the heavy metal signal chain is relatively the same across all the subgenres just the types and uh, brands of the equipment that are used in each of the respective blocks if you will so um, you can apply this to about any type of metal or even hard rock that you play and just substitute it with your favorite brand or sound that you're trying to achieve and you'll probably do a good job. So the first thing that we're going to need for a pedal rig, of course, is um, one of these multi uh, 9 volt outlet doohickeys. This is one from Donner and it costs about 15 bucks. I have one of the one spots and uh, it's getting a little ragged. It's on my pedal train pedal board and, you know, getting some wear on the uh, protective covering on the on the cord, but it still works like a champ. I've had it for like 10 years. I've, you know, not saying that it's, you know, road worthy or anything, but, you know, 15 bucks if it blows out in a couple years, just buy another one. It's not that big a deal. So you'll need one of those to power that. Don't recommend nine volts. One of these pedals in here doesn't even accept a nine volt battery anyway. Um, maybe one of the rechargeable big bricks that Pedal Train has is pretty good. But once again, this is budget conscious. 15, 20 bucks. Don't spend more than that if you're, you know, really tight on cash. In terms of a pedal board, if you want something to arrange it, I've done exactly as the name um, sounds. You know, back in the day, that's how the name came to be. People literally using boards, <laughs> plywood or two by fours or whatever, double sided tape, zip tying stuff down. If you really want to keep everything tidy in one place, that's how you could do it. Buy some spray paint, paint it black if you want it to be, you know, look halfway nice, cut some holes in it if you have the uh, proper tools for, you know, cable routing. But, um, if you're just recording and stuff in your room, doesn't matter as much, but if you want to keep it tidy, there's a very low to no cost option if you have some stuff lying around. So that's the basics. That's the uh, underlying, you know, kind of uh, prerequisites for a pedal board, I guess. Now on to the actual signal part of it. Now for a heavy metal rhythm tone, generally your signal chain is going to be the following. Guitar, then your overdrive or equivalent thereof, amplifier, and cabinet, cabinet mic combination if you're playing through, you know, like a PA or you're recording or whatnot. For a lead tone, you're gonna to have something generally in the um, effects loop of your amplifier, whether it be some types of delays or reverbs, flanger, chorus, whatever, and we'll get to that momentarily. But the first thing we wanna start off with is an overdrive pedal, and you can hear this thing in the comparison um, 
the explanation rather of the differences between overdrives, preamps, and distortion pedals. And in this case, you really do want an overdrive pedal. There's a million different types, but unless your amplifier or your substitute for it is just so tight and high gain that it works for your sound, you're probably going to need this to tighten your low end and um, you know give your amplifier a bit of a boost. This is Zach Wilde's MXR Overdrive, the first generation of it. Anything like a Tube Screamer, um, you know, TS-808 or, you know, every freaking metal guitarist seems like has their own signature um, overdrive. So whatever you like, that's fine. I would recommend going with something that doesn't break the bank. Um, I think like uh, pedal companies like Tone City, they're fairly cheap, anywhere from 30 to 50 bucks. This one you can find used for around the neighborhood of 50 bucks. I wouldn't spend more than $60 on an overdrive. It's like one of those things that um, you have to have kind of, but it's not a spectacular job you know it's like a garbage man kind of it's like um you know i respect them and we need them and i appreciate them we couldn't be heavy metal without them but it's like you don't miss it until it's not there so don't you know blow your load <laughs> on an overdrive pedal they do a very simple job they take out some of the low boominess and add some crunch you can go wild and spend 250 dollars his entire budget on uh, horizon d devices you know um, Precision Drive, I believe is the name for it. it has a built-in noise gate and all kinds of crazy stuff like that. But um, yeah, if you're budget conscious, just picked up something used on the market. Go to a pawn shop. You'll probably be able to find something like that. Now, instead of an amplifier, of course, we're using a pedal. Um, I reviewed this exact more Moore or more. I'm going to start saying more because Moore sounds stupid, but even though it's the way it's written, uh, 008, which is a Mesa Boogie Mark III clone. Um, and as detailed in the review, basically modeled in the same way that Kemper or Fractal Audio uh, products would be modeled. And uh, it sounds freaking fantastic. They have nine more of these and a few other high gain options, including an Engel Blackmore Diesel Hagen um, among their repertoire. So if you're looking for other stuff for more, sometimes they call these preamp pedals, depending on the companies, overdrives. And it drives me insane. Um, there's an Eddie Van Halen or EBH rather 5150 overdrive pedal that is a preamp. It's like, you know, I don't know, five times the volume of this thing, but it does the same thing. You throw an overdrive in front of it, you get an EBH pedal, sounds like 5150. Um, also 5150 available for more, by the way. Um, so just, you know, look, you might have to look at the description, but do get something that emulates an amplifier. That's what you want. And uh, this thing has a built-in cabinet emulation, so if you're playing through something like directly through headphones or a PA system, you can do that and just pair these two pedals together and you have basically everything you need for a cheap uh, heavy metal rhythm tone. The only thing you're missing is kind of a noise gate and um, we'll get to that momentarily. But this thing's great, has a lead and clean channel. Um, probably my favorite pedal that I own as of right now. Absolutely fantastic design, saves your uh, presets when you switch you can change this to on and off or switch between the channels get you something like this um, best hundred bucks I've spent on my pedal board by far and uh, that's about the range you'll want to spend on this thing I paid 80 bucks for it personally because I got a, a discount code but somewhere in you know the 80 to 100 dollar range maybe if you want like a Marshall you can get a little bit cheaper in some um, pedal makers but in terms of accuracy this thing blows people's minds in terms of how good it sounds. So I would definitely recommend something from Moore's line if you can get it. So that covers amplifier and your overdrive and even cabinet, even though you're a little bit um, limited in this space. And you've only spent, you know, anywhere from 140 to 150 bucks. So you got quite a bit of room to play with. And the next pedal is definitely our secret sauce, though your mileage may vary and your use case may vary. But before we get to the next pedal, um, I'm a dumb and totally forgot about the little short inner connections between each individual pedals. Um, so you can get a pack of like three or four of these things for, like I said, dirt cheap, five bucks. Um, this isn't gonna be a significant part of your budget. You can get higher quality, shorter jack stuff, just depends on um, what your needs is. But once again, this is a budget oriented video, imagining you're gonna want something that just does not cost a whole lot of money. Uh, these are things that I've had for close to 10 years, and they're they're fine. Um, as long as you don't abuse them too much, they live on a pedal board primarily, and they do work. So um, that's the main thing. Our next pedal is 
kind of optional for just a base primary rig. A matter of fact, if you're just looking for something and you're like, I need something that sounds like a dual rectifier. Um, I need just something to, to jam with and um, something basic. And this will cover it right here, your overdrive and an amp and cabinet. It's not versatile. It does one thing and it does one thing pretty damn well. But um, if that's all you need, that's all you need, and that's fine, and that'll get you by. And if you need to scrape together some more cash in the meantime, you can always do that to acquire uh, the next pedal here. Now, our next pedal is something that I would also advise either buying used or getting something in the lower end range of um, today's market because there's actually a lot of good stuff available for under 100 bucks. So this is a Zoom G2 Multi Effects pedal, and I don't normally use this. I've played with it a lot. Um, this was a gift from a friend. From a friend to him, um, basically had no use for it. And um, there's a problem with the grounding on the output. So unless you touch your finger to this, uh, you get a lot of background noise. But I thought for this, um, you know, video, this might be something that you'd get stuck with, right? Um, if you're on on a budget and I could fix it, but I don't use it in my pedal board I was actually going to demo instead of this a Korg multi effects pedal, which I've had for 10 years um, But I double-sided tape the hell out of it. And it doesn't want to come off my pedal board So we're going to use this for demonstration purposes, but what this does a little bit of everything so that you could think of this as your like first gen budget guitar model so you got stuff like a compressor um, wall uh, this is their built-in noise gate-ish stuff. If it doesn't cut it for you, you can always buy something like the Donner's Noise Killer for like 30 bucks. Um, a lot of these do have built-in noise gates nowadays though, which is nice. Uh, but you also can emulate some amplifiers. Now, they're not even in the same ballpark, the quality of this, but if you're just jamming or, you know, trying to play a, a learn a song or play along to it for practice, it does a really good job especially when coupled with something like an overdrive pedal so um, you know it's not wonderful it's not something I would take gigging with me but for practice and whatnot it um, it is a great backup a great addition to this so instead of having you know just one really good amp you have one really good amp plus 15 or 20 meh ones um, and the newer gen of zooms and cores whatever boss multi effect stuff have a lot better modeling over the years so if you do want to splurge a little bit more you do get what you pay for um, got some EQ this is the most useful thing to me and that's a cab sim and once again it's not up to the quality of what you can get you know, on your computer with free cabinet simulation but um, you can choose between a dynamic and compressor microphone on three separate positions and when combined with this amp with the cab sim off it does sound really good uh, surprisingly good in fact then you have stuff like delay, reverb, um, some mods slash sound effects, which is like chorus and uh, some other thing, flanger, phaser, stuff that doesn't fit into there, um, as well as the ability to control all these parameters from an external um, uh, expression pedal. Almost forgot the word there, <laughs> uh, which is something this does lack. And for me personally, I would love to have an expression pedal. That's why I bought the Korg because you can control stuff like volume, wall, whatever and it worked really well for me starting out. So this is just an example. I wouldn't re um, recommend something like uh, this exact thing all the time unless you come across a really good deal. Korg does have some new stuff in the 60 to $70 range that have some really good reviews, so I would recommend that over this, but if you get you know something that, that gives you delay, reverb, cabinet emulation, all of that for significantly less than that, and you are tight on a budget, um, you probably won't be disappointed to spring for it just because you do get stuff like, you know, delays and all those things that you might want for a lead sound. So um, that's generally what I would do, though, is a overdrive, really good amp. Make sure the amp and your cabinets are what, like, sell the thing. That's what's going to be your bottleneck in terms of tone to me, uh, in terms of believability. And then delay, chorus, reverb, the nicer the better, but those aren't going to be your killer features if we're, you know, sticking to a budget. You're not going to get Axe FX quality of reverb on um, a $250 budget in 2017. Hopefully in the next few years possibly you can, but as of right now, not so much. So um, let's demo those things together, see how it sounds through um, a 
also budget uh, guitar, the Epiphone Les Paul, which is something you know around that price range. I imagine some people like that would be interested in something like this would probably own and uh, see what kind of job it does. <laughs> So I think for the price, that's a pretty damn good sound. And it's really versatile, really adaptable to your playing situation. You can plug straight into something like an audio interface to record demos. You can play um, straight into a PA if you're jamming with a band. You can plug into the input of, um, or the effects loop of an amplifier and turn off the cabinet, uh, cabinet simulation if you do upgrade down the line or you have something like a practice amp that does accept that sort of thing. And, um, you do it without breaking the bank, which is really important to a lot of people, to most people. You know, you can't just throw around $1,300 to $2,500 on fractal audio systems, even though everyone would love to be able to do just that. And, um, you know, this is the type of stuff that I jammed with for years before getting into higher end equipment, and it worked just fine for me. It was never a bottleneck of. Um, you know, oh, this amp doesn't sound exactly like the real thing. I therefore can't learn how to play this riff. It, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. It's um, if it's allowing you to be able, you know, exercise your creativity and learning how to play the guitar, then that's all that matters. And this, you know, this thing goes well <laughs> above and beyond that. So yeah, um, just as a recap, go get a multi output 9 volt power supply, get a couple of um, these little interconnector things, in this case you'll need two, uh, you'll need an input output cord or not even an output if you're plugging directly into headphones, and um, then you'll need an overdrive, not find anything, you know, it doesn't matter, go to a pawn shop, find Boss's signature little orange box drive, um, or this, or TS-808, whatever, splurge on a good amp, sim and uh, get something that works for you in terms of delay, reverb, cab sims, and all those other niceties. So um, yeah, I thought this was a pretty good little experiment and I think it's a, a compelling offer for, you know, cheaper than a, a guitar itself is. So if you are budget conscious and just want to get a good upgrade from something like a starting rig want something really portable, just to throw in a bag, uh, something that's decent enough to record, you know, demos with free software, especially if you couple that with stuff, you know, like cabinet 
impulse responses and built-in effects to it that are in you know some digital audio workstation programs this is more than enough I think for someone starting out um, especially if you're still exploring your sound you don't want to blow a whole lot of money and then realize oh my god this isn't even the amp I want mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is a good pathfinding uh, experiment I feel like so um, if you have any suggestions leave them below but I uh, I was very happy with the way this turned out let me know if you have a similar budget rig and how it sounds to you and I look forward to doing these types of videos more and more in the future so thanks for watching and we will see you next time thanks bye